there are some decisions that are straightforward but there are also some decisions that are very complex how are you this is dr freddy acosta once again welcoming you to this channel so um yesterday i had a session with my master of management in agribusiness and we're talking uh, the unit is called decision analysis and risks management okay so we were talking about uh, smart or uh, simple multi-attribute rating technique uh, we use that uh, technique when we are dealing with problems involving multiple objectives okay so there are four factors that uh, complicate a situation right and when these factors are involved in a situation then you are facing a very complex problem one of those factors is uh, if there are risks and uncertainties risks like maybe you're going to lose say one million dollars or you're going to uh, lose a, a customer lose control of the market and so on and so forth or you can go bankrupt so those are some of the risks that's one factor another factor is when there are multiple stakeholders okay so when that de when that decision involves many other people and their lives are at stake okay then it is a complex decision if the decision will only affect you as an individual well it is quite easy or relatively easy to just what close one eye and open the other eye and make the decision uh, it would be unfair for other people whose jobs lives will be affected by your decision okay so that's the second factor the third factor is if you have a complex structure meaning uh, say you are confronted with a dilemma wherein you have many many options sometimes it's very difficult already to choose because of so many options plus after choosing one option uh, you still have to do many succeeding decisions for example uh, if you have a dilemma whether to quit your job and become a consultant well that's a major decision and if you do uh, quit your job and become a consultant uh, you still have to make other decisions like say are you going to operate at home or are you going to have an office that's another decision are you going to operate alone or are you going to hire someone that's another decision and many other decisions so that's complex structure and the fourth of course is what we discussed yesterday what if you have multiple objectives okay uh, in life we have multiple objectives and the problem is we cannot have everything okay for example you might want to uh, hire a senior executive okay you need someone who is very competent highly educated well accomplished and many other you know uh, good qualities for a senior executive and of course another objective is you need someone whom you can comfortably afford now the problem is when uh, you have an executive who is highly qualified and yet he is asking for a salary that is very difficult to to meet now that's the problem okay so that was the topic that we discussed yesterday yeah. problems involving multiple objectives so we are just waiting for our time we're going to class now it's about uh, 10 minutes before two o'clock and we're going to our class so yesterday i gave them an assignment uh, we did a presentation uh, we gave an example of an office selection problem wherein you have seven different offices and uh, potential candidate offices and we have uh, identified our value tree in terms of cost in terms of 
return okay so in course of, in terms of cost uh, we uh, by the way cost uh, we have two objectives and that is we have to minimize costs and we have to maximize benefits okay maximize benefits so in terms of costs we are looking at rent utilities and other costs in terms of benefits we are looking at the turnover and of course we have we are looking at the comfort okay so in terms of turnover, you know, how close is that office to our customers, the visibility, and of course the image of the office. And in terms of comfort, we're looking, you know, in terms of, uh, yeah, comfort. So for our staff, we're looking at the space, the size, we're looking at parking maybe, and so on and so forth. So that's our value tree. And after we have identified our value tree, then we have to assign values to these uh, attributes. So those things that we have uh, identified, we call them attributes. Okay, uh, and then you assign values to those attributes. So for example, uh, we are concerned about return. Okay, benefits. So we assign value in terms of closeness to customer. And then after we assign values, we have to normalize those values. Okay. And then now, after the normalization of those attributes, values of those attributes, now let's start assigning uh, actual values to the different seven offices and then evaluate them, multiply the normalized values with the actual values that we have assigned to, to the different offices. And then, then we can make a decision based on the benefits at the same time the costs. All right, so let's go to our class now and then uh, let's witness, let's watch the presentation of our students. I give them an assignment. I ask them to interview one of their classmates who might have some problems pertaining, well, involving multiple objectives, okay? It could be that they're looking for a very senior executive or they're looking at, uh, you know, uh, very expensive, you know, IT systems or they're looking at maybe different mode of transport or a supplier and so on, or a, a hotel okay they're looking for a hotel where they can host a very special event and so on and so forth so those are the objectives those are the problems that involve uh, multiple objectives all right so join me as we go to our class so we are in class we are just waiting for the students to set up their presentation. <laughs> relax, relax. So I'll start. So 
So how I think the enterprise is looking for it should lead to manage and lead the implementation of the organization's range of programs, developing donor and stakeholder relationships, driving the enterprise's business policies, as well as the developing strategic partnerships. As before I continue, I'll ask us so just to brief brief you. Review on that. Just coincidental. Simon, Peter, Jane, and Mary. So for each of this, the attributes, everyone was, was interviewed and people were picking points, and those are the points, percent, the points that you're given out of a hundred. So it is a body space bar on the country. In that in this program, in this 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 particular um, role um, from our group, we decided to go through using a hotel dilemma that Betty recently had. Uh, Betty had been sent by her company to go reach out for hotels, specifically five five hotels that he, she was meant to take a potential <coughs> executive, two hundred of them, to a meeting where they would uh, do that they had a presentation on, on some of the special products or something like that that they were going to, to present. The five hotels were Capital Club, Odyssey Remy, Kempinski, Sankara, and Radisson Blue. Uh, it's enough for the entire uh, group that will come to the rental space, at least rental space, uh, meaning how comfortable, ah, uh, sorry, how much, how much? Mm -hmm. how? As a package. Package. How much as a package for the entire space that they will get in this space? If it's Radisson Blue, uh, if they're giving the hall or or, or if they're giving a room, what what uh, benefits that could could be used based on the cost as a package? Three was the parking space. Parking space, considering that there were 200 people who had to come to this event, a priority was parking space should that should have been enough for each and every one. That is our efficient frontier, uh, we noticed that, um, so, so something I didn't pinpoint is that when, when Betty went to all these um, restaurants, there were values that were assigned, there were costs that were assigned, I think it's not here, that she would not visit. Also, uh, the, best, the best location. So that's it for the presentation. Uh, I think the three groups did very well. Hmm. So. Let me just set up the presentation for the next topic.